Ethiopia is Africa's oldest independent nation and one of only two African countries that were never colonized. The country has made many historical tourist attractions, including some of the oldest Christian and Muslim sites. Plus, it is a spiritual homeland of the Rastafari religious group. That's right. And as the country seeks to attract a greater number of regional tourists in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic, it must also contend with the reputational damage of an ongoing conflict between the government and forces in its northern Tigray region, which recently attracted sanctions from the U.S. Why Higa Maura recently returned from Addis Ababa with this report. As you land in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, you may not realize that you are literally traveling back in time to a country whose calendar is seven to eight years behind the conventional calendar. In early September, Ethiopians were gearing up for their new year and on the 11th crossed over from the year 2013 to 2014. We are here with a delegation of Kenyan business people and tour operators to explore opportunities, especially in the tourism sector, which has been battered by the COVID-19 pandemic and recent sanctions because of the ongoing conflict in the north. The capital city of Ethiopia, Addis Ababa, is often referred to as the political capital of Africa because it hosts the African Union headquarters and other international development agencies. Founded back in 1886, the city is in the middle of a major facelift. Tourists will be enthralled by the view of Addis from the Entoto National Park on the slopes of Mount Entoto, adjacent to the capital. Historically, Entoto Mountain was a palace and the royal court to Emperor Menelik in the 1800s when he founded Addis Ababa. Nowadays, this park serves as a tourist attraction with both indoor and outdoor facilities. I'm actually shocked. I didn't expect Addis to be this beautiful. This place we are in right now is out of this world. It's the most serene place I've ever been to. It's like you're standing on top of the world. As we go back to Kenya, we are going to motivate other travel agents to market Ethiopia destination. But one newly constructed attraction that sits within the national park grounds of Ethiopia is the Unity Park, inaugurated in 2019 by Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed with President Uhuru Kenyatta in attendance. With the Prime Minister's office located here, filming is restricted. Six attraction sites, including a zoo, historical buildings, and indigenous plant exhibitions can be found here, with some of Ethiopia's black-maned lions also resident here. With Addis Ababa now boasting of its fair share of tourist sites, the talent has been to get tourists here in the midst of a pandemic that has hampered travel. We knew that... Uh, globally, uh, successful tourism happened just because countries are trying their best to create a uh, regional tourist package and again by doing uh, joint promotions. One of the goals is to streamline access to Ethiopia for Kenyan tourists and vice versa, similar to what already exists among some members of the East African community. We've been doing can, uh, tours to other African countries and uh, as tour operators, our work is once we have um, a familiarization trip of somewhere, we'll go back and package and also bring more people uh, to Ethiopia. Ethiopia also boasts of nine UNESCO World Heritage Sites. And we depart Addis the next day and head east to the walled city of Harar, known in Arabic as the City of Saints. Considered one of Africa's oldest Muslim cities, Harar is said to be over 1,000 years old, with its fortified walls built between the 13th and 16th centuries. It simply is hard to believe how a city like this one has remained intact since the 12th century is one of this region's biggest mysteries and one that tourists keep asking about every time they visit this location. But when you talk to the locals, it's not a big deal. It's all they've known and their ancestors since the first foundation stones were laid here. 
The most important thing in old days, uh, there is no any corruption. So whenever they build anything, it's lasting forever, lasting forever. So uh, the wall, it takes about uh, more than 460 years old. People are reside there in the old city. So people are reside there at the same time. It's a museum also. It's a living museum. During the day, tourists here can explore the maze-like alleys. But at night, the terrifying laugh of spotted hyenas can be heard on the streets of this ancient walled city. Viewed with fear across the African continent, here the hyenas live in caves outside the city and roam the rubbish dumps, also outside the walls. In fact, the daily hyena feeding spectacle is just one example of this city's unique heritage. So history books indicate that these hyenas have actually been spotted around these parts for the last 500 years. But it's only in the 1960s when we're told a farmer began feeding them on a regular basis like this to keep them away from his livestock. It's a practice that's picked up. It's become a tourist attraction over here. But do not try thinking of doing this alone. You need this man here. They call him a hyena man. He's able to communicate with them, control them to ensure that I remain calm with this fella behind me so let's see if i can feed him oh my goodness okay oh, it's actually a lot more fun than it actually uh, uh looks and uh he'll be off my back in a minute uh once he's uh gotten his his fill of uh, you have to try this the feeding exercise lasts about 30 minutes, and once the hyenas have had their fair share, they are more likely to wander off. But in the midst of such remarkable history lies the tragedy of an ongoing conflict in the north, pitting government forces against forces in the Tigray region that began in late 2020. To tourism Ethiopia, however, the plan now is to market alternative sites in the country. Uh, but the idea is Ethiopia being uh, one million square kilometer large size country, uh, the north security issues should not affect, you know, the big tourism resources we have in the south, east, west, and the central part of the country, including Addis Ababa. So this is one uh, big argument I have, and uh, we are selling it that way. In the midst of all this, tourism Ethiopia remain bullish that the conflict will soon be resolved as tourists continue to visit, attracted by the dominant national carrier Ethiopian Airlines, which is Africa's largest airline in terms of passengers carried, destinations served, fleet size and revenue. The Bola International Airport is also competing for regional hub status with Kenya's Jomo Kenyatta International Airport with an expanded airport terminal which triples its passenger capacity. Thus, the country is looking to work more closely in the coming days with other East African nations to market its destinations. Wahiga Mwaura, Citizen TV, Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. Oh.